Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to my Smackdown review or some would say tonight I guess is the go home show for Smackdown I guess maybe before Blood Money 3 next week or Saudi Arabia or whatever you want to put from that. And tonight will be the only night that SmackDown is going to be on FS1 due to the World Series going on right now. As I am speaking, they were going to be on a different channel for tonight. And what do I have to say about this whole blood money, Saudi Arabia, go home show and what's going on tonight, huh? What was it, Kansas City tonight? And what do we do? Let's start off right off the bat with uh, Miz TV going on with some of Team Flair and Team Hogan inside of the ring, pretty much on Hogan's side, uh... Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, and Shorty G, or whatever you want to call him, Chad Gable, whatnot, and on Team Flair's side, you have Nakamura with Sami Zayn, of course, his manager is there, and, um, uh, you know, waiter guy, uh, King Corbin out there, pretty much Miz introduced everyone then, um, he introduced everybody that was out there. Next thing you know, um, Hogan and Flair pretty much start going back at each other. Pretty much Flair said that, you know, Hogan has no chance, that he's a symbol, a great team, that he is a leader. He has led the four horsemen before, and he's going to lead this team against Hogan in Saudi Arabia. That his ego has just gotten too big, and pretty much he's also tired of looking at Roman. I'm tired of looking at you every week, okay? And he says that no one's going to stop him and they're going to beat him at Saudi Arabia. He pretty much get a woo out. Hogan pretty much says, you never beaten me, brother. And that's not going to happen at Crown Jewel. Mm. <laughs> but yes, they're not going to beat him at Crown Jewel. You racist motherfucker. Um, pretty much right after that. Uh, Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn interrupted, uh, Hogan then, pretty much talking about Shorty G and Mustafa Ali, pretty much calling him short, uh, let me say this about Shorty G before I move on, what is he wearing out there, is he a basketball player or is he a wrestler, because he had the shorts and the shirt on, and I'm wondering, is this guy going to shoot some threes up the, up the, uh, block or at a court somewhere, or at someone's gym, or what, whatever basketball port, court he could find, or is he about to be in a wrestling match? I'm not really sure what Shorty G is supposed to be, and they got the big G up in the front. He's wearing like this green and blue gear, and I'm wondering, he looks like a created player off of NBA 2K20. That's what he looks like. I don't get what he's supposed to be. I honestly don't. What 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 is this guy supposed to be? Is he, is he a basketball player? Is he a wrestler? What is this guy supposed to be out there? Because let's already make Shorty G jokes, and I kind of made before as it is, but I don't know what they're going with this. And he's talking about you know being accepted, and he's gonna be him and everything, but um he's gonna silence his doubters. But is this the gear this guy is really wearing to a wrestling match now? Because it makes literally no fucking sense. So. Okay, I've made jokes before, but the guy looks like a basketball player. He looks like a creative player off of NBA 2K20 that wants to go up the block and shoot some hoops or do some dunks or something. Cause that's why I'm waiting on him, Shorty G. So, I don't know. And as you can see, the rest of the teams are not there because other than that, this is two different shows between Raw and SmackDown. So, I guess they want to keep them off because they are on a different show and we'll just stick with the SmackDown ones then. Pretty much Mustafa Ali also talked. Um, pretty much said that Sami Zayn saying that he is, uh, you don't even compete anymore, you're a mouthpiece, and it's ironic given your bad prep, and I already know the joke of, uh, Mustafa Ali and Shorty G. Ali G, Sasha Baron Coben. Think about that. They could be a team name, Ali G. Oh, boy. But, um, pretty much then after that, Corbin started talking to Ali, saying, like, why are you talking or even in my ring? Pretty much says you're in the presence of a king. And that Roman there, he may be a former champion, but this is his kingdom out here right now. And he will bow to him that these people don't need a hero. They need a ruler. They will rule with an iron fist. But R Roman told him to shut up. I'm sick of you in that king garb. It's stupid. Shorty G pretty much says, I want to fight. Pretty much punch Corbin in the face. Hogan pretty much says, oh, we have a six-man tonight. I have a preview before Crown Jewel. But Sami Zayn and them were like, no. Team Flair ended up pretty much walking away. Hogan pretty much went again. Like, how about we have a six-man tag? Pretty much calling out the guys individually. He called Nakamura, what, um, Ichiban? Which I know that means number one, Nibon. 
and he called him a young boy after that, which looked like Nakamura was about to head back up in the ring and knock Hogan's head clean off his shoulders if he wanted to go kick him. That was some disrespectful shit right there, calling him a freaking young boy. I don't know why, I just felt that was very disrespectful that Sami Zayn looked like he had to hold him back. But Nakamura did look pissed off, though, if you if you ask me after, um... Mm. But yeah, that young boy shit just sounded very disrespectful, though. Um, pretty much, you know, he called out Sami Zayn then... Uh, pretty much, you know, you're the big guy, you know, Sami Zayn and stuff. But Sami Zayn said he wasn't going to do this match. He was hurt because of his neck on his way to the flight. So he got someone that he has a special relationship with, a close one. He brings out Cesaro for this six-man, which, you know, I'm still trying to understand Cesaro's gear with the, um, I, I don't know, what the, the shorts or, like, track pants and gym shoes. I, I don't know. Something about it. I, I don't know what Cesaro's gear, though. But pretty much they all headed to the ring. It came a brawl then. Hogan's team ended up standing tall, I guess, wait until later on for later in the match. Uh, they then went to New Day, who were on their way out the ring, up to the, well, on the way down the ring. One thing I will say, Xavier Woods is not here right now. They mentioned he has a torn Achilles. He had surgery on it today. I believe successful. I didn't really even know Xavier Woods was really that hurt. I, mean, I guess I didn't really bother to look it up that much, but he has a Achilles tendon torn. I don't know how long he's going to be out, to be honest, but I know they brought the iPad looked like with him and they had these armbands that said XW on it for Woods, but I, I don't know how I don't know how long Woods is gonna be gone for the time being. No, uh, pretty much the new day of both Kofi and Big E went against Rude and Ziggler. They are they do get a title shot by the way next week. Um, Big E and Kofi, but um, this match wasn't really that long. A lot of tag teams were watching in the back. Pretty much Ziggler and Rude ended up well Ziggler got the roll up on Kofi, which in a way was surprisingly, especially if they have a title shot next week. Why are they even getting pinned out there, huh? Makes no sense. Pretty much the revival come out there and trying to start jumping the new day. Then a heavy machinery comes out, makes the save as more tag teams watch in the back then after that. For this tag team turmoil, whatever the crap it is, I don't know. But they still gotta get that going. Um, but I was surprised New Day lost just because they have a title shot. I don't know if it's going to be that descent in Kofi Kingston, though. No. You know, he said he's always believing in the power of positivity, but how long can he go? I don't know, but, uh, we'll see if something does happen from that and, and everything. Lacey Evans went against this, um, pretty much a jobber, Cameron Connors. She got in the ring, pretty much said she has too much respect for herself as a woman to face this nasty thing, so she wasn't going to do the match. Pretty much she left midway through count out. The girl pretty much distracted by the crowd. Turns around. Lacey Evans pretty much knocks her out with the woman's right. Winning one, two, three. I don't really know what to say about this other than it was just short. I don't know why they had Lacey Evans facing jobbers on here. And anyway, unless it's going to go somewhere. I'm not really sure, but I guess we got to find out and see. Um, it was time for the Firefly Funhouse. Since Seth burned the Funhouse last week, Bray Wyatt was there to have a funeral. For the rambling rabbit. Had to pay my respects. Uh, but they were all wearing black. Pretty much asked what they thought about the rabbit. He was annoying. He talked too much. He, or the buzzer liked him. Pretty much they were going to have an open casket for the, the rabbit. Even though this rabbit dies every week almost on this show. I'm convinced he's the new Kenny of South Park. He just dies and he'll come back the next episode or two. And he'll be back like nothing even happened. Pretty much she opened the box and the rabbit was all bloody and mangled and stuff. But Wyatt kissed it on the head and said goodnight three prints. Pretty much the puppet came back to life and everything. Maybe because of the heel glove or something. And he's good. He's alive. He didn't want to talk about the other place and everything. But then next thing you know the buzzard starts beating up the rabbit. As Wyatt ended up saying uh, see your crown jewel. I don't really know what to say about this whole Fire Blast on Funhouse segment. Other than that brave Wyatt. The rabbit is super over. I will say that. He's the Rambler Rabbit. He dies almost every other week, but you found one way to bring him back to life. So, the Rabbit lives, folks. The Rabbit lives again. But, um, right after that, then, uh, the Firefly Funhouse, Drew Gulak, who got a jobber's entrance, went against Kalisto, which they even had a pre-tape pretty much saying they're on SmackDown and stuff. It wasn't much to say about this match because it began with Drew Le Gulak's PowerPoint again. I didn't even know if he was even still doing that regardless the last time I checked 205. But I don't know if he really was. I don't think he was doing it anyway when he was back on 205 recently. But um, he does his PowerPoint about Strowman and Fury. Pretty much Kalisto kicked them. As the match went on, um, Braun Strowman came out. Gulak got distracted. Kalisto ended up hitting the Selena del Sol. Um, Strowman pretty much got in. 
hit him with a power slam, hit him with another power slam when the fans chant one more time. And then pretty much he said that, um, you know, pretty much said, so you're going to disrespect me. This is what happens to you when you disrespect me. But Gulak at least deserves to be in this ring. Nat Tyson Fury. Um, what does it say from this? Um, Nat Tyson Fury, though. Number one, Drew Gulak is a freaking jobber out there. You know, I've said it before last week, wasn't this guy like this tough shooter or something? Like a submission specialist on 205 Live. But now the guy is just jobbing on the main roster. And going back to doing his PowerPoint presentation when he was there in uh, 205 Live to begin with. But I'm sure you really do watch 205. You're probably going to be disappointed that, hey, this guy was a good heel on the show. Why is he now doing this goofball stuff, getting kicked by his ass by Strowman and jobbing everyone every week doing PowerPoint? So it's I don't know what to say about the... Um, them right now but yes this guy was a dominant force on 205 live now he's just some job guy again getting his ass kicked by Strowman every time it looks like and I'm sure if you watch 205 I'm sure you're really disappointed in seeing uh Gulak like this in general they just some goofball now so sucks it really sucks for him though uh, Michael Cole was there to conduct an interview with Daniel Bryan, pretty much asking him if the yes movement was back. Is he reluctant to do it and everything? But before he could answer, though, Nakamura and Sami Zayn come out then. Pretty much Sami Zayn uh, pretty much says, you know, it's impressive that you beat Nakamura last week. But let's talk about your promo back in November then. Pretty much talk about when the new Daniel Bryan was here and that the old version of him was dead and the yes move was dead and everything. And people booed. And he says that they didn't like you at the time, huh? And, you know, I know you, though. I know the real Daniel Bryan. I like the new Daniel Bryan and everything. These people don't. And I know you meant every word you said and everything. But you're an honorable and good man. But, uh, you know, we know you legitimately care about the planet and that both of them do, too. As Sami Zayn pretty much says, like, you know, we got enough in common with these people. And, um, you know, me and Bryan, know we have a lot include, you know, we have a lot in con common with each other, including Nakamura. Sami Zayn Premier says, you know, I'm vegan, you know, we're saving the world and everything. And Nakamura cares about environmental issues. Sami Zayn pretty much, you know, encouraged him, like, come on, like, join us, pretty much. He put his hand out for a handshake. He put his hand out for a handshake. But Brian looked on and conflicted whether to go with the crowd and that. Pretty much he pulled his hand back before he could shake his hand, walking off then as his music played. That was one of the most interesting things on the show. Will Daniel Bryan remain dark? Will he retain, you know, stay with Sami Zayn and uh, Nakamura right there? Even I'm like my friend said that Sami Zayn is just way too damaged out their entire year. Same with Nakamura too. So will Kevin Owens really join them? I don't know. I have no idea. But we'll see what goes from that then. But that was an interesting segment, though. I will say that. Uh, Nikki, Cross, Nikki Cross ended up going against Mandy Rose then. Uh, Bailey and Sasha were on commentary. Th the match was okay. Pretty much a showcase for Nikki Cross out there against Mandy Rose. Uh, pretty much taking out the bill and even hitting her uh, spinning net breaker on... Um, Mandy Rose for the win. I thought Bailey and Sasha was good on commentary. Pretty much, you know, Bailey pretty much trying to compare herself to uh, the old Bailey. That's what Nikki Cross is right now. So that's um, what some are going off of that. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, it was a good promo. It was a good promo though for her on the table. Still got built that title match. Cain Velasquez and Rey Mysterio came out. Why is Rey here? The guy is on Raw, but apparently he can go to both shows now since he's, uh, you know, uh, managing or training or doing something, whatever, with, uh, you know, Cain Velasquez. Mysterio can show up on both shows, it looks like. He's Even though he's on Monday Night Raw now, but Mysterio, pretty much his arm is still messed up, and he talked about Velasquez pretty much beating the hell out of Brock Lesnar back then and beat him, like, very down, and he thanked him. For help saving his son as his son has gotten better. And he wanted to thank for all the support and everything. And you know. It, it, none of that that happened with Brock beating him up. Is going to interfere him from being a wrestler. And everything. And pretty much time for Lesnar to pay what he's done to his son. Pretty much um, Mysterio. Pretty much Velasquez is going to drop him. Putting a scar on his face. I know he spoke something in Spanish for a minute. But next thing you know Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman showed up. Paul Heyman told him to be tranquilo. Tranquilo. Ah, Senayo. And that's the yeah, Senayo part, but I'm sure you know what I mean by that. 
And they pretty much, you know, he talked about Velasquez. He's a paid thug, and he's going to try to do what he can to scar the face of Brock Lesnar, that this man's face is scarred. Heyman pretty much said that, you know, Lesnar has things to do and everything. But um, Heyman told him there's going to be no booing here. As Mysterio wanted Brock, pretty much says, you know, uh, what have we been doing? Huh? What of whom we've we been doing? What are we doing around here, huh? And pretty much as Heyman says, uh, who, what, where, huh? I guess we'll see what's been going on. Pretty much um, the camera went back. Lesnar pretty much held up Dominic as I guess he was beaten up again by Brock Lesnar. I don't know if you're doing, you take your kid to work days and not working. But uh, he gets beat up again before Brock and him walk off. Um, the, the promo was okay. I, I will say that. It wasn't bad. You know, Mysterio did most of the talking. Hey, maybe he could too because Velasquez, I don't think Velasquez is over with the crowd yet or can't even talk. So he's just a hired gun that's not really saying anything right now. Since he's a uh, hired gun. Uh, next, Dominic was on the table though then. As the trainers checked on him with Mysterio and Velasquez. And as they trained and Ray was on his knees. Next thing you know, Brock comes in throws a trash can of both of them. Ray jumps on Lesnar. He gets F5 into the wall. That looked very painful, by the way. Um, getting F5. And then he pretty much started beating up Kane a little bit more. Well, he, dom- he F5'd... Um, he F5'd... Um, Vasquez on to top of um, Dominic, knocking them all to the ground as all three of them just laid there dead. And then next thing you know, they show Cain Velasquez doing this promo saying Brock. He was yelling in Spanish, though, so I didn't really understand what he was saying. But he was, I guess he was calling out Brock then, saying he was coming for him. Uh, but then we got to the main event, Mysterio, Staff Ali, and Troy G versus Nakamura, Cesaro, and Corbin. Not a bad match. It was a good six man for what it was. Ended up with Roman hitting the spear on um, Cesaro, but he let um, Ali do the 450 splash too to pick up the win. So it was a basic side tag match, I will say that. Um, crowd was over for Reigns, I will say that too. They were pretty over for him um, in near the end of it and everything. But, um, you know, Ali getting the pin was a cool move, I will say that. I think Cesaro may already have a match at um Cesar at um Crown Jewel. I'm not really sure if that's true or not, but I think he does. Um mm. Crown Jewel and everything, so I guess that's gonna go. But um yeah, it wasn't bad, I will say that. SmackDown had its up and downs a little, but it wasn't really a bad show i as I would uh, particularly say though. But it was good. I w- I will say that. It was a Good show for uh, SmackDown tonight, especially with uh, Reigns and them picking up the win. I'm still not buying this Shorty G thing. No, the guy wrestles with the gear on. He doesn't even take the basketball jersey, shorts off, anything. The guy wrestles in full basketball gear. I don't know why they just got him doing that, though. All right. Yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense from that. Sorry, I was yawning right there, though. But, um... Yeah, other than, um, almost, no, almost, but, um, the Ali and win, no, no, no. But other than Nakamura and them losing, no, we'll see what happens next week at the full year show in November. So that is going to go down and everything. Uh, well, we will see what happens off of that. But SmackDown, I don't know, man. SmackDown, like, it's ups and downs at, at the end of the day. I don't think it was a full house. I don't know how the crowd, the crowd was empty in that. But, um, this was a really good show in my general. Yeah, I think it was uh, more enjoyable in general, though. I will say I'm trying to remember if anything else that happened from it. But um, that's my thoughts on um, SmackDown tonight, all right? That's what I really would say about this uh, entire show. But other than that, I'm going to roll from here. I will see you guys later. Peace out, and just comment, subscribe, and do whatever from uh, that point. But I'm out of here. I need to go check out this Yay album, and I'm going to sleep. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.